The book is a testament to the power of experience, knowledge, and foresight backed by data-driven insights and a deep understanding of the nation's unique challenges and strengths. Dr. Olusegun Aganga, CON, is a chartered accountant with a professional career extending over four decades in the financial services industry and public service. A former MD at Goldman Sachs and senior director at Ernst & Young in London. He was first nominated by President Olusegun Obasanjo and appointed by President Goodluck Jonathan as Minister of Finance and Chairman of the Economic Management Team from 2020 to 2011 and thereafter Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment from 2011 to 2015. I first met Shegun while he was the Managing Director of Gold Goldman Sachs in London, a very important position in the financial world. It was part of the bank's delegation that visited me in Abuja between 2004 and 2005 or thereabout. Both of us connected quite naturally when he was introduced as Shegun. But more importantly, because I was highly impressed with his contributions during our discussions. I challenged Shegun, who was a diasporan, to get more involved from his base in London in our nation building efforts here in Nigeria. Dr. Shegun Anganga has always cared deeply for Nigeria, for Africa, for society. And many of you will not be aware of this, but when he was MD at Goldman Sachs, he served on a committee that led the groundwork for transforming our capital markets, which was called building a world-class capital market. So the SEC, the Nigerian capital market, is indebted to him for that work. I gently hinted the then President Jonathan, of the need for him to appoint Shegun as his financial minister. Not only was Shegun appointed minister of finance, he was also appointed chairman of economic, economic management team. Shegun was later appointed the pioneer minister of industry, trade and investment, MITI. I did not feel let down by Shegun's performance in the two portfolios that were assigned to him. I remain proud of him for his performance. I describe the book as a special one because I know the capacity of the author who worked closely with me in managing the economy of our country under our administration. Then Naganga handled key portfolios in the economic sector, including finance minister, chairman of the economic implementation team, and minister of industry, trade, and investment. You could simply describe him as an insider on economic issues in our administration. It is comforting that he has documented his experience in government and his substantial experience in global finance and economic management in this book. As Minister of Finance, I was honored to work closely with him to reform our markets. One of the things for me that was particularly important was having a minister who understood the value of capital markets. As Minister of Industry, we worked very closely together in mobilizing foreign direct investment and some of those 40 country trips that he had President Goodluck participate in. He mobilized many of us uh, across um, various agencies to join him and showcase the great things about Nigeria. I was privileged to serve first as a Minister of Finance and Chairman of the Economic Management Team and later the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. Big, big thanks to President Obasanjo, as you heard, who nominated me, convinced me to go to leave Goldman Sachs in London and to go into public service in Nigeria. 
And of course, he was supportive all the way, all for the full five years. And of course, a very big thank you to President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, who actually appointed me, first as Minister of Finance and later as uh, Industry Trade and uh, Investment, uh, for also creating the environment for us to perform while he was president. Uh, it was a joy and a privilege to work for such a president. He initiated government policies and championed the rejection of non-beneficial foreign agreements to Nigeria and Africa. He led the efforts to make Nigeria the number one investment destination in Africa and created the Sovereign Wealth Fund, issuing the nation's first eurobond. Reclaiming the jewel of Africa, a blueprint for taking Nigeria and Africa from potential to posterity, drawing on long experience in both the private sector and government, Olushe Ganga provides practical and pragmatic insights for change. There's a common understanding that Nigeria and indeed Africa have great potentials. You hear that all the time. When I was in government, I saw firsthand that the potential I hear about outside government actually is huge. Particularly when you consider the natural and human resources Nigeria is blessed with. A country blessed with more than 44 solid minerals in commercial quantity. A country that has more than 85 million hectares of land where almost everything can grow. Has no business with food insecurity. A country that is a top 10 or 10, 15 in terms of oil and gas producer in the world. A country that has the demography that is the envy of the world. A country that has some of the best brains anywhere in the world. Go to any university anywhere in the world, Nigerians have been there and are excelling and some of the best students in those universities are Nigerians. How many countries in the world can boast of all these things I have talked about? Very, very few countries in the world. So the question is, why are we not where we should be? What is stopping Nigeria from playing the role it needs to play in Africa and becoming one of the greatest and most prosperous nations in the world? Olushe Ganga was the chairman of the Joint Board of Governors of World Bank and IMF in 2010 and 2011. He chaired the eighth ministerial conference of the World Trade Organization in Geneva, making him the first African to chair these two organizations. Currently, Dr. Olushegu Aganga is an advisor to companies and governments in the UK, US, and Nigeria. He is the founder of the Nigeria Leadership Initiative, a board member of Technosab in the US, an advisory board member of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, and a member of the Investor Advisory Council of Times Partners in the UK. Reclaiming the jewel of Africa could not have come at a better time than now. A timely reminder of our collective responsibility to nurture an environment that fosters curiosity and encourages critical thinking. It looks like over the past few years, Nigeria has been uh, kind of bereft of ideas. Or maybe the ideas were just hanging there and waiting for somebody to bring them together, articulate and give a sense of direction. For me, that's what uh, there's a general agreement that Nigeria and Africa have great, huge potential. Uh, there's also a clear understanding, common understanding, that we are not where we want to be or where we think we should be, given our huge potential as a nation. If you look at Nigerians in the industrial, for example, they are regarded as the most educated immigrants in America. If you look at the United Kingdom, they don't support the NHS. They're, and there's the confidence which has to see it with them. Entrepreneurship is, is not DNA. So the idea is to articulate in the book what I think is holding us back, what I know is on exposure, what we need to do to unravel, remove that chain 
drawing from the experiences of other countries, how they have dealt with it, and where they are today. And I have every confidence that if we, if those matters are addressed, we will be one of the greatest nations. As President um, uh, uh, in Belgium, of South Africa, who wrote the endorsement checklist, the road now for Nigeria and Africa. And I tell you, if Nigeria rises, Africa will be great. Africa needs Nigeria.